Hi, I'm Phil Ashey from the American Anglican Council. We're going to take a dive into the daily office, which begins in the prayer book at page 9. Now, the daily office is a, a way of praying and reading the Bible, reading the Psalms, uh, making your confession before God uh, in the morning, at midday, uh, at evening, evening prayer, and at the end of day uh, in a service called Compline. Now, when I was growing up, I was encouraged to have a quiet time, which we all understood was reading the Bible and uh, praying and, uh, you know, just spending time away with God. And I want to tell you that this daily office has meant so much to me personally. It shapes my thinking. It keeps me going. It points me in the right direction with lessons from the Old Testament and from the New Testament. With, uh, with ancient prayers that are from the scriptures themselves, with a time to examine my heart uh, and find out well, what, did I, uh, what did I do yesterday or what have I done in the last five minutes that's uh, been displeasing to the Lord and, and how can I confess that, bring it before the cross uh, and be forgiven and set free. So we're gonna have some friends now share a little more about this daily office and what it can mean for you. I'd, I'd simply say as you listen to them, realize that this is for you. This is a structure of praying that you can do every day as I do. Do it over a cup of coffee or a cup of tea, whatever. Uh, bring your Bible uh, together with this prayer book, but let it shape and transform your life. So let's listen in. Well, one of the things that um, a prayer book helps us do is pray daily, pray throughout the day. And um, when, we, when we pick it up, we find um, our relationship with God growing. Um, we find it because we are saying similar prayers um, day after day, week after week, year after year. And it's grounding for us. It's spiritually grounding because, you know, some days you get up in the morning and you don't feel like praising the Lord. And when you go to the prayer book, it gives you words to praise the Lord, even though you may not feel like it. To me, the prayer book is priming the pump for my relationship with God. So morning prayer and evening prayer are really the, the bedrock of daily Anglican prayer. I'm Father Andrew DeFusco. I'm the rector at Jonah's Call, which is an Anglican community in the heart of Pittsburgh. It was planted about 10 years ago. It's always been a passion of mine to help the church worship well as much as I can. As we took counsel together over the years and heard from other ecumenical partners, um, it became clear that we would love kind of more points in the day to kind of hang our spiritual hat on. And so um, noonday prayer has been anciently when people pray, you know, David said, I'll rise up and praise you in the morning, praise you at noonday and praise you at the end of the day. And so stopping at lunchtime to pray is a natural time for many of us. It's a very brief set of prayers for midday. Um, and then bedtime is also a very natural time to pray, especially with children, if you have children. Um, and so you, you pray at the close of day as well in a, brief, a briefer way than you would in kind of morning prayer or evening prayer. The very first thing that you'll notice about the Book of Common Prayer is that it starts off with a section called the Daily Office. And it's actually, office is kind of a funny word, but it comes from a Latin word that means our duty. Um, and it's an invitation to pray daily um, and join the church in praying daily. So while um, you may pray it by yourself, one of the things that I love about the daily office is you never pray it alone because around the world, Anglicans are praying the similar prayers, um, using similar scriptures. So it's our, our duty and, and actually our joy to be joining our voices in prayer with the church. There's a basic structure for, um, for daily prayer, where it is the psalm and then scripture and then prayers. Added to that basic structure are um, a series of opening prayers, um, sentences that relate to the season of the church, and then there are, uh, in between, responses um, to, the, to the readings. And these were traditionally sung or canted, and they're just little phrases, um, canticle, diminutive for, form of, um, of, a, of a song. 
So it's our heart's response and reply to what has just been written. In our hectic world today, in our distracted world today, um, we often find that we try to slot in time for God. And what the prayer book tradition helps us do is turn that around and we set the time for God and then fit our life in under that. So when we stop for prayer, um, we are uh, creating room in our schedule to be in the presence of God and let that form us. Um, it's a it's a discipline that then becomes a joy. Um, it's sort of like you know when you're starting out running. I know for me it was really really hard to get started, um, but then once it was part of my um, daily routine, uh, I would miss it if I didn't have it. And so I feel like spiritually this is similar to starting any new habit that's good for us. Uh, it can be a little challenging starting off, but stick with it because eventually my experience is instead of us praying the prayer book, the prayer book prays us um, because we start to memorize. We start to memorize the prayers. We start to memorize uh, the rhythm and the pattern. Um, and this becomes really important, particularly in, in later life. Um, I've worked as a chaplain and um, one of my great delights was uh, meeting new residents coming into the nursing home where I was serving. There was one uh, new resident that came in and um, this person was uh, nonverbal and um, when I was interviewing her husband I found out that they had a, uh, a prayer tradition um, that they wanted to continue. So we said the Lord's Prayer together, the Our Father together. And when I was praying, I was looking at this couple and I noticed that um, the husband had a tear rolling down his eye. And I asked him, I said after, I said, what, can I ask you, what was that tear about? And he said, um, I haven't heard my wife's voice in seven years. And yet she was praying the Lord's Prayer with us. It prays her. When we, when we own this tradition, when we own the prayers, uh, they go deep within our, our, ourselves, our souls, and God meets us even when um, we may not be able to communicate in any other way.